portion of that message that came to them and I won't read it's just a few short verses but I, I won't read the 13 verses because I want to save the most of my time for speaking to you you may read them when you get home tonight and please follow us if you want to take notes that's great the first scripture of course is the scripture we are familiar with we should be Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Ye come by wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Then on down the line, it just keeps talking to his people. And look at the fourth verse and the last part of the third, it speaks of the everlasting covenant that he's made with them, including the sure mercies of David. That's a lot of mercy. said, I have given him for a witness to the people. Now it changes from the sure mercies of David, and it goes into messianic prophecy, uh, considering uh, Jesus Christ himself when he was to come into this world, God in form of flesh, said, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader. How many believes that Jesus was a leader? Yes. How many believes he was a commander? Yes. He commanded evil spirits to leave and they had to go. He was a commander over elements. He was a good commander. Said, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel. For he hath glorified thee. God loves his people. Let me make this statement before I read any further in the Scripture because it fits so well right here. We all know in the history of this nation that they had failed God. That's the reason that God tossed them like a ball down into Babylon. But what uh, almost infuriated the, our Lord and his concern was, of course, with their shortcomings and their failures, but his great concern was not that. And that may come as a surprise. His great concern was that they didn't come to him daily in repenting and asking mercy. I'm glad that we can come daily to the Lord. Verse 6 said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Two classes of people right there. You've got those that are extremely wicked. Forsake your way. Then you've got the good moral person, but yet he has some thoughts. Let him forsake his way. And let him, and it looks and reads like 
these two classes of people here once had known God. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He said, because my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And this scripture was fulfilled this afternoon. For as the rain cometh down, this was fulfilled in Wyoming the other day, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now listen to this. What a comparison. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Brother, that's a whole sack full right there. That's just not five loaves and two fishes. That's after they've been multiplied. That's taking care of the whole world. Just like the rain produces what we eat and so forth. The sun said, My word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. What a commander that when he speaks, it will not return void. And it, but it shall accomplish that which I please. What pleases God? What is the pleasure of God? We've been studying it for about a month. Oh, hallelujah. It will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. And it's the Lord's good pleasure that we what? Prosper. And be in good health as thy soul prospereth. And he says that when he sends his word into that thing which it is sent, it will prosper. That's another sack full. For ye, now this is speaking to the children of Israel now that's in Babylonian bondage. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Now keep in mind especially these words. Ye shall go out and be led forth. And it tells us how we're going to go out from Babylonian captivity. That's with peace and joy. While the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The 
The Lord said, We'd be the trees of the Lord, and the field is the world. All the trees will clap their hands. While instead of the thorn, remember, we just got to talking about unrighteousness and wickedness, and we're going to bring this out the Lord's willing later. But instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Boy, that is a change, isn't it? Boy, there's a change when you get out of Babylon. Even everything around you looks different. And instead of the briar, things that really prick you and stick you shall come up the myrtle tree. And all of it summed up in these next few words. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. All these things that I've mentioned, it said, it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. We're taking our text, the Lord willing, from this portion, and it shall be to the Lord for a name. It shall be to the Lord for a name. I'm speaking tonight with God's help on this subject, the reputation of God. The reputation of God. It shall be to the Lord for a reputation. The reputation of God. Reputation just simply means... Uh, Good name, integrity, fame, and renown. In other words, it shall be to the Lord for a good name, integrity, fame, and renown that he's done these things for you. Let's raise our hands to God. How about it? <coughs> For a name. The final issue of redemption that was sung about tonight is to be the reputation of God or the name of God. The goal of all the good of achievement that was set out from beginning of creation until even now will be to his reputation, to his name. In fact, the glorious climax of all things will be to the reputation of God. In fact, God shall have a universal and a glorious and an everlasting reputation, the Bible says. It shall be to Jehovah for a name, the Scripture says. We today are accustomed to... When we speak of reputation under the designation of a name, we think of an individual or we think of a business, they have a good reputation. Their business is good. That man has a good reputation. When we think uh, of a name, and I could use many of you tonight, we think of your name, maybe on your job, that man's got a good reputation of knowing how to get things done. A good reputation. We say that the man's got a good name. Not only do we say that, we say to the man, be careful with your name or be careful with your reputation. Now this Old Testament word that we have used tonight carries the same meaning. And it shall be to the Lord for a name or for a reputation. By name is meant a glorious representation of God's character. In fact, the issue of our salvation 
is the reputation of God because it's in the name of God. God's reputation described as God's name is illustrated when Joshua got in trouble. In fact, when the city of Ai, in other words, Lord, your reputation is that you win battles, you win victories. And if this battle is not won, what will thy do unto thy great name? He dreaded that God's reputation would lose its lustre. And I think that's a sacred dread. But I'm here to tell you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's got a reputation God's got a name, and he's going to keep it forever. He'll never lose a battle. It may look like he is, but he won't. Everybody say hallelujah. In fact, it's necessary that God should have a name or a reputation. It's an eternal necessity. It's not necessary that you and I have a name, just a name. But it's necessary that God has a name. Because we see in it the individuality of God. God desires a name. That's the reason he took on a name. Because he has feelings. He has personal desires. And he desires a reputation that's widespread. Well, he wants a splendid reputation. And he knew the only way to have it was to have a name and to stand by it. And it's necessary that he have a name for his people's sake. Aren't you glad that God's got a name tonight? One of our greatest blessings tonight, church, is to realize the reputation of God. If you could only get the seed thought of what I'm about to get into. This is one of the greatest blessings of the church is to know that God got a reputation. Do you know what God's most fragrant reputation is? It's in our finest sacrament of worship and praises unto Him and exalting his holy name. What I'm saying by this is meant in the Lord's Prayer in its beginning. Hallowed be thy name. Not one request. But the finest sacrament is worship and praise and honoring his name or his reputation. In giving God a name, a reputation, you're gaining to yourself a reward. It's necessary. That God should have a name for the world's sake. And let me tell you something tonight, church. Tell them. Tell them about God. Tell them about His reputation. That He's not just loving. He is love.
what he is? Tell him that he is the greatest service that we can render. Tell him that God is in big business and he takes care of his business. Tell him his business is above every business. And the name of his business is high and exalted above ever, ever other business name. A reputation. So it's necessary for God's own sake that he have a reputation or a name. It's necessary for his people's sake that he have a name. It's necessary for man's sake that he has a name. Because it's like a fragrance in the breezes. And with this fragrance, we should pour his name forth until it fails every mind that there is no God like our God. There is no Savior like our Savior. There is no Redeemer like our Redeemer. The reputation of God. God's deliverance of His people. Give Him a name. For in this verse 12, if you've noticed which we have used. The Bible says, for he shall go out. That's not the end of it. And be led forth. Now we could characterize this as the people of God then the people of God now. You shall go out. You shall be loosed from Babylon. Not only shall you be loosed from this world, Babylon. Babylon means confusion. But you shall be led forth from confusion. Where from? From Babylon. Where to? To the homeland of the soul. God himself, the Bible's telling me, going to bring them out. He'll conduct them like a conductor on a train. Out of the land of idolatry into the holy land. Church, what an exodus. What guidance. God himself leading the way. Amen. This may be your stance tonight, maybe not. But you are in captivity now, but you shall be delivered. The world shall hear of it. It will be to the Lord for a name. He wants the world to hear about it because he wants them to know I got a reputation that what I promise I will fulfill. I'm in big business and I don't have empty shells. I got a backlog of supply. It's according to my riches in glory. And God just told me before I left the house today, he said, I'm going to open up my treasures to you, my son.
Hallelujah. What a treasure. God will open it up. I'll show you what I'll do. I'll make myself known. I'll prove to my people that I have anointed thee to preach faith. Of which they should need no proof. But in mercy, I will show them my glory. And even to King Nebuchadnezzar. When he saw what God had done. He took the burn out of the fire. Not even a smell of the scent of smoke was on their garments. And the king cried out, There is no God that can deliver after this sort. What a reputation! Do you in similar matters give God a name? Can you say not as a heathen king, but as a saint of God and a lover of truth? There is no God that can deliver like our God. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you give God a reputation tonight? It's absolutely necessary that God delivers from guilt. Guilt is the liability to suffer punishment for sin. That's guilt. And there's a lot of people tonight that are suffering guilt. You're suffering guilt. And you cover up your guilt in measures that are really unnecessary because it don't make you feel any better and whatever you've used to cover up your own personal guilt, you're still guilty. But the Bible says, you that are guilty, you shall go out and be led forth. I'm here to tell you, God's got a reputation tonight to deliver you from your guilt feeling. He's saying that the terror of guilt will die away. In fact, the fact that you have left... Praise Him for it. Worship Him for it. Give Him a reputation for getting rid of your guilt. It's necessary that God delivers from evil habit. Did you know God don't only counsel out past guilt? But he averts new guilt. 
And that's a blessing. He gives us power and enables us against sin. And the proof that he does this is our character. Something's happened. I'm not guilty anymore. And are we giving God a name for it tonight? A reputation? The scripture is saying here in this chapter, let it be known that I have led you out with a strong arm. It's necessary that God delivers us from sorrow. How many has ever been delivered from sorrow? They were in a strange land of grief. In fact, the Bible says that they were by the river of Babylon weeping, crying in sorrow. They had lost their song. But God spoke to their sorrowful hearts. You shall go out and be led forth. I'm taking you from your sorrow. I'm delivering you. I'm glad that God can deliver from sorrow tonight. Some of you have had personal sorrow. You've had family sorrow. Just a lot of sorrow. But God says, I'm going to lead you out personally. The scripture says this is the Lord's doing. He said, why don't you spread it and tell it? See to it that it be for the Lord a name. And of course, the characteristics of God's people... Give him a name. Because look at this. Not only are you shall go out and be led forth, but look at the characteristics. It is marked by joy and peace. Everybody say joy and peace. Joy and peace. Say it again. Joy. And these are the features of grace that's given to a person that's let out. Joy and peace. This gives the Lord a name. They come out of bondage not hanging their heads but lifting them up. And when they lifted their heads up, they lifted his name up. God's fame is enhanced by clothing his people with such royal vesture. No wonder Paul said, I looked into the scriptures in the concordance on this and there were so many. But this is the nutshell of it. No wonder Paul said, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. That's the characteristic of God's people that give him a name. They rejoice. They rejoice. And again, he says, rejoice. Rejoice in all things. Rejoice in the fields. Rejoice in your heart. Rejoice in the church. Rejoice at home. Rejoice at work. Rejoice everywhere you go. That's a characteristic of the child of God.
In fact, this reflects the honor of God. This restless world that we're living in, they need peace. Why don't we give God a name and let them know through the characteristics that God has given us, joy and peace, that they can have it. Did you know men think more highly of God in your profession of faith when they see the qualities of the divine expressions of God radiating from you that they cannot help but detect there is a light that's brighter than me that I need. Even the reputation of God, even nature gives God a name. Surely we will. For look what the Bible says. For you shall go out with joy and peace. And will nature be unsympathetic? No, so they're going to join in with you. Because the Bible says the mountains and hills break forth before you in singing. And the trees clap their hands. When the sun rises, I see and hear the words of holy, 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 holy be to thy great name. I looked out this morning when I was studying for this message for tonight, just going over it, praying. I'd already studied several hours. But early this morning, I was right by my window, and uh, I saw a little bird. You hardly ever see a beautiful red bird come right up by your window. One of the prettiest birds I have ever seen. It, it was a, I don't know what species of what, but it had a long, beautiful feathers like up here on it. A beautiful bird. And I looked at that bird. And I didn't see it with my window. I saw it through my window. And there's a vast difference. Because my window don't see I want to be more than a window pane. Give me your attention, please. Give me your attention. And I thought, as I read this scripture and I looked at this, and in my imagination, I could see that little old bird so thankful as it began to pick up something to eat right there by my window. Begin to eat. And then it raised up its little head like this and it made me think that the little bird was saying, Thank you, Jesus. And then I looked over and I saw the, we got some pine trees out there close. And that south wind was blowing against them. It looked like every time they'd blow, they'd say, praise the Lord. Yeah. 
that window didn't see that, but I saw it looking through that window. Like you may not see it tonight, but I do. Then I looked over there at the uh, little cypress tree that Brother uh, David planted for us. Oh, that thing's getting pretty. And I looked up there at that big old tall pine tree and it was praising God. And in my imagination said, thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for talking in tongues. Thank you for baptism in Jesus' name. And then I looked at that little old cypress and it said, let me sing alto with you. And the big old pine in a small whisper said, you such a little bitty thing to want to sing. But if you want to glorify God, join in with me. Oh, let's worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a reputation. To even make trees want to sing. Everybody loves God from the heart. Glory. I saw a turtle going across our yard about that big. Brother Craig, you sure seen a lot of things. I sure am. <laughs> There's about six or seven acres over there, and it's uh, you can see a lot. And that old turtle was going sort of like this, Brother Kenneth. But every step it took, I could see it taking it in Jesus' name. <laughs> You may think I'm slow, but I'm going to get there in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, my. Sister Creel, did you see that turtle? I believe you did. I saw one in the paper today, too. <laughs> and don't you know that old turtle was crying, turn me loose in Jesus' name. <laughs> let me out of here. And let me tell you, you may seem like you in slow motion tonight. Uh -huh. And I'm not getting there very fast. I got it in low grandma. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, if you will go in Jesus' name, you're going to be set free and you're going to get there. I said you're going to get there. Woo! Hey, let's give him a name, what you say. you know that all beautiful transformations give God a name? Listen at this. Look at the transformation we see in this scripture. 
in that 13th verse. Instead of a thorn, what a transformation. Shall come up a fir tree. Now, do you believe God can transform? He's got a reputation to change a thorn to a myrtle tree. You can't do that. And then we get to worrying about some things that God's going to do or is he going to do it when he can do this? Instead of a thorn, come up a fir tree. Instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle tree. That's a transformation. But the thing that's so glorious about it, it shall be to the Lord for a name, for a reputation. And this is the ultimate meaning of this transformation. Instead of the wicked shall rise up the righteous. I'm looking for that day. Hey, are you looking for that revival? Hallelujah. Well, if trees clap their hands and mountains sing, and turtles say, I'm going in Jesus' name. Why can't we? What a transformation. Instead of the wicked shall rise up the righteous. Instead of the transgressor, men that fear sin. This gives God a name. When the individual thorn becomes a fir tree and the individual briar a myrtle tree, it's by God's power alone. What a reputation. To transform the repellent into the attractive and the injurious into the beneficent. This is the crowning work of God. This gives him a name. In conclusion, to change blindness to sight, darkness to light, to bring death to life, grief to joy, bondage to freedom, Error to truth, madness to gladness, sin to righteousness, from torments to peace, from hopelessness to hope. What a repetition. Let's thank God. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, the reputation of God. Now, okay. Here he is. If trees praise him, if winds glorify God, If the seed speak out his wondrous love, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? If you don't, it's a sure sign you're in Babylon. If you don't worship, 
You're in Babylon. You're in confusion. You're being deceived. You're in selfish captivity. Are you ready to give him a name? Let me tell you something tonight, and I'm telling you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may resent the Word of God and the anointing of God and it being preached. But there's coming a day, friend, you're going to resent the Spirit the last time. You're going to sit there the last time in your sin and not repent. And in your bitterness. Oh, hallelujah. God's got a reputation. And he's going to keep it. Forever. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 God will confirm his word tonight. He said he would open up his treasures. Let me tell you, first of all, we're coming to you this way for a renewing, the whole church, ever visitor. The Holy Ghost is in the name of Jesus. And that's God's name. That's his reputation. Speaking in tongues is in the name of Jesus. So in faith, when you speak the name of Jesus, tongues is already on the end of your tongue when you say Jesus. I am asking God tonight, For a spiritual renewing for this great congregation. A praying through to speaking with tongues as a spirit gives utterance for everybody that's present. Start calling on Jesus' name. And let it happen. If you want to talk in tongues again, do like we said do, by faith. Expect it to happen. It will happen. God's got a reputation. Keep yielding. God's got a reputation. God's got a reputation.
Lord, fill this auditorium. Fill every soul. Fill every person with your spirit, with your power, and with your glory. Hallelujah. You can talk in tongues again tonight. Keep worshiping God. Start clapping your hands like the trees. God re baptize us tonight. God re baptize us tonight. Re baptize us tonight. Receive you the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Ito bakatadi dia tadi dia tadi. Speak it up, that is in your tongue. Tata 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 dia tata. Keep it talking. That's it. You're talking it now. Man. Come on. Tata 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 dia tata 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 Speak it. That's it in your tongue. Keep talking. Tata tata dia bakatadi dia bakatadi dia tata dia tata dia tata dia. Now keep it up. That's it. Tata 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 dia tata dia. Now forget about saying it now and go speaking it another language. I say now. Come on. I said you got to because of you think you receive the Holy Ghost now in the name of Jesus. I said you got to I said you got to come on. Keep it up. That's it. That's it. Keep it up. It's on. It's there now. Keep talking. Keep talking it. Folks, the Holy Ghost is falling. Come on. <coughs> Sister Hasty wanted to talk in tongues again. Come on, church, come on. <clears throat> How many wants to talk in tongues again? Everybody wants to talk in tongues again. Stand to your feet, raise your hands, start worshiping God, and you will. Reputation is signs follow believers. Signs follow believers. Church. This is the climax of his name exalted to deliver you from Babylon. Come on, church. Hallelujah. 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 Let him talk to you.
How many feels you need a deliverance tonight? All right, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, by faith, I am set free. Now thank him for it. Jesus, the name above.